Hey, what's good, man? Welcome back to another episode of Poly Wide, man. Where I go around different areas, showcasing where our people reside, food spots, just stories of our Polynesian brothers, man, and sisters. And uh, it's, I'm happy to say that this is the first episode where we've flown interstate. First of many, man. So today we're going to link up with the Usos, uh, Bio Misa, also known as YP and uh francis lotto also known as friendly local brand uh we're actually at st mary's right now to this gym that they've invited us to just to a couple of little sweat but i'm not training um revolutions gym bro so shout out to these guys man there's been content filmed about mount Druitt, but i wanted to come at a different angle and uh show the story of these two stores man and where they are now man and um god's really changed their life to where it is now it's cool to see there's one thing I do admire about Polynesians, you know, Fijian, Samoans, Tongans, we're very strong in our faith, man, and these guys decided to step away from whatever they're doing in the past and, uh, yeah, turn to Christ, bro. So, big kudos to them. Love and blessings and respect, too. So, yeah, come with me on this journey as we go around and film uh, Mount Druitt with these guys and show their story and where they are now. And instead of naming it a Poly White episode, I wanted to name it born again so tap in make sure you like and subscribe i appreciate all the love man let's go round two le lavar Ten seconds <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so. Oh, that's so. Thank you. Man. This is the Uso Chris. He's one of the brothers doing um, positive things out here in um, Mount Druitt with the FTA crew. Yes, sir. Yeah, much yes, sir. love to the Uso. Anything you want to say, Uso? No, man, we're all a part of this. We're trying to make a positive change for our community. And it uh, goes a long way when brothers like yourself are, you know, leading our spearing that movement. So, well, man, we're better together, Uso. Love you, Uso. Better together, 100%. Ah, you're looking good, brother. I'm trying to learn how to block. Because I get lazy and then I just walk in. Even when I try to block, I try to do the Mayweather thing and I just keep getting hit. I was like, sorry, what's he doing that I'm not doing? <laughs> no. Sorry, yes. Yeah, I, I should be studying now before I just take the day to do this. But then I've got, a, I've got four hours to finish my assignment. As you can see, YP is very fit, very young. Oh, must be nice. How you feeling, Gus? You don't even look like you're tired at all. <laughs> it's the way to start the morning, man, I guess. What's your, what'd you have for breakfast? Solid fast, eh? So I didn't eat that. Learned that from YouTube. <laughs> Just been watching YouTube videos all day. <laughs> Doesn't work in real life, no. Thank you for taking it easy on me, brother. <laughs> yeah, so this is also Sunny. He's the one who's running this um, boxing class. He, uh, opened it up himself. So. To be honest, it's our work, you know. Franny's been a part of this too. He's been coming down and joining us and, you know, getting amongst it. It's not only myself, you know. There's much boys behind the scenes too. Oh, me, Captain, uh, one of the boys, uh, Deezer, and that, we were just in the um, room over there. There was only three of us, and we're like, oh, let's That's just hit Deezer, pads. By the way. There's big Deezer here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and one of the boys, Cap, like, we're just hitting the pads, and then all of a sudden, everybody wanted to join, and that's how it all started. Everything, everything. As you know, in the area, there's a lot of positive influences, you know, Franny come a long way. I know the Uso from since we were young, his journey speaks volumes, you know, and... Just the last question, um, are you a man of faith? Yeah, yes, brother. Who do you believe in, brother? Oh, Jesus, Jesus is my Lord and Saviour. Yeah, how did you find Christ? I found Christ at a young age. Some of the boys, they brought me to Hillsong and, you know, as you go there, I was only there for the partying and, you know, for the girls and then a relationship I had there, but then what I found was a lot of the things that I received there, I went on into the world and realized, you know, you can't deny, you know, that there's a God out there and that he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And then from there, here we are, you know, doing God's work and Praise the Lord. Thank you also for your time. Thank you. Love you also. Love you also. God bless you, my brother. Thank you all for out there, you know. Awesome what you guys are doing too, so. After the gym, 
we headed out to get a feed and this is where we really got to know the boys. Mind you, this is the first time YP has been in front of a camera since he's turned his life around. Perception of Mount Druid is just a this, it's a that, yeah. but it's, it's good to see like what we went through this morning. Yeah. A lot of good usos that are coming out of the area that yeah. are businesses and stuff like that. Yeah, there's a lot of smart, talented people coming out of the, the area as well. Why do you think that it's like that? Why do you think that people only want to showcase the bad side? I feel like they do it for views, to be honest. Man, there's a lot of good that's coming out of the community too. Yeah. Oh, that's just my opinion, man. I could be wrong, also, man. Sometimes I think if I was in uh, on Instagram or something, and if a fight popped up, yeah. or if I was a lady that's trying to promote her video, like what video would I watch? Yeah. The fusu one. <laughs> <laughs> the lady that's trying to push their business. Out. <laughs> Sad, but you know, that's just the way I think. It's the reality of us. Especially us PR yeah, people, yeah. bro. We, you know, like we come from. A lot of us come from those type of environments. How are the boys, like coping with the whole situation, with you know you going on another path. Obviously, they'll be happy for you. They still co um, going on with the music and stuff. Yeah, also they they're still doing their music and um, yeah, no love lost or, or respect to what they're doing. But you know, we're just like at that point where we're just at different parts of our lives. Yeah, they're taking one road and. Yeah, I'm taking another road, so. Yeah. But I no love losses, man. Yeah, There's still my usos. I mean, grew up with a lot of them since I was young. Looked up to them since I was young. Being the youngest in, yeah. the, in the crew and stuff like that. I tell you now, a lot of people are gonna miss your, your bars, bro. I've already seen heaps of comments, bro. Respect to what he's doing, but I'm gonna miss his, his bars. Bro, you gotta, imagine you becoming a Christian rapper. Not gonna, <laughs> not gonna say nothing <laughs> Who, hey, who is your actually, who is your favourite artist from Australia? Honestly, bro, like, and I don't really listen to much music nowadays, True. if I'm being honest, yeah. Mm. Bro, this is actually the hood, bro. Straight up. Charlie picked up the also. Francis, all the way out of my pops. Massive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, heaps. Way, like, there was heaps more before, but um, it's, it's kind of like, as inflation and that rises, like, People are starting to move out. And with all the deportation stuff happening as well, um, getting rid of the man of the house, you know, like people are starting to move, get moved to New Zealand and things like that. So a lot of families are being getting moved out, unfortunately. But a lot have just moved out on their own, you know, like moving to better places like um, Ropes Crossing and that. I grew up in Chugir. I think there was some... Did you grow up there as well? Or were you here and there? Yeah, I'm my childhood was... In Chugir? Chugir, Wilmot. Cause we were moving from house to house at the time yeah. from Wayland up to I was about 11. Community tight, everyone knows everyone. It's getting there or well, getting back to it. I think there was a lot of division during the, the period of like 2010 to 2016. Why is that? Um, just a lot of the, the trapping and things like that started um, really coming through the area. Um, so I was in prison during all of this so when I, when I went in, we were all happy family yeah. kind of thing, but um, as time went on and the years passed, like one or so will come in, he'll be like, oh, I don't talk to that or so anymore. And so that, just over these, um, the bizzo and things like that. Yeah. yeah, so. But it's starting to get back to how it was before. Everyone's getting older now and yeah. everyone's starting to see like, it's not worth fighting over. And Both of you guys went inside. What was the transition like coming from you guys doing such a long land and then coming out and seeing everything upgraded? I haven't done like a stretch like the Uso. He done, yeah, he done a whack. But um, I guess that time that I was away for, definitely an eye opener when I came out because I seen the world differently. Because inside you get programmed a certain way. Got to wake up this time and do this this time. So coming out, it was hard to adjust back into society and community. I, I guess. Yeah. Well, for me, it was like the same. It was hard to adjust. There was uh, certain things that, habits that I that I had in jail um, that weren't really helpful out here. Um, but some were, like getting ready early and things like that. Doing a long lag and that, like people already know what you're about, so they don't tread on your toes. But I don't use that to be prideful. Yeah. I don't tread on anyone else's toes, you know? It's, it's a respect thing. We all know that we all have the potential to do harm, great harm to others and they have the same potential to do it to me. So it's just men, you know, real, uh, real gentleman stuff where it's just respect and, and manners goes a long way. But out here, it's very different. You know, out here, everyone thinks gangster is being rude and yeah. being um, disrespectful, but 
inside. That's the quickest way to get your wiffles, like, you know, <laughs> um, get them dropped and yeah, that. Bro. But even till now, I've been out three years and I still struggle with that. But if it, yeah, if it wasn't for the love of God, like, yeah. God is always, like, His Word, you know, the Bible always hits me every time, you know. He's like, oh, are you offended, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, now you know how I feel every time you do what yeah. you do, you know, and I forgive you, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it's yeah. like, well, you can't forgive them just because they're doing this to you or saying this about you. Turning the cheek is, has been a hard thing. It's only possible for me through God, you know, so yeah. still getting there, you know, yeah. but definitely better than before. I want to circle back to turning the cheek because I've watched some of the stuff that you were talking about mm. and you said, the last leg you did was probably the hardest at nine months. Yeah. Now you know Christ. you want to change your life. Yeah. You want to follow Christ. Mm. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. Mm. Feel, like I've like I've talked to someone and they're like, bro, before you went in, you were thinking of of changing your life as well. You know, and well, like how disheartening was it uh, uh, to be like go go back back in when you're like, man, I'm trying to do right. I'm trying to do stuff, but you know the world's just weighing heavy on me. Yeah, it was, hard, man. it was hard. Like it was really hard. I'm not gonna lie. Like we were speaking about before, programmed to, I guess, live a certain way. And like coming out, like the Uso was saying, yeah, I was the same. I was functioning a certain way, and then I'd wig out on people if they were not functioning that way because I, in my head, I was still kind of in jail. And that respect, like the Uso was saying, is a big thing in jail. Man, we would have been like some close friends. In my head, he's done something that fed me and I've just yeah. done some stupid stuff. So, you know, that trust started disappearing when I was um, involved in that lifestyle. And yeah, it, it was sad, but at the end of the day, I'm just grateful for this new journey because I really found peace in God. And yeah, it was hard to, I guess, change fully because it was like one foot in, one foot out. Still indecisive, but I just knew that, you know, when I started uh, fully committing myself to God, man, the changes and the peace that I was feeling, oh, it, was, it was different. No more looking over the shoulder and whatnot, you know, yeah. just paranoid on the car valleys pulling up and stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, it's just all right, you know, if I get, if I get knocked, if I get to bed today, then it's God's will and stuff like that. If I don't, then you know, thank God that um, you know, I'm still able to live life out here. Yeah. That's crazy. Amen, brother. Yeah, it was um, the toughest thing, bro. Like, because the seven and a half years I done was just straight ulkai, you know. Like, it was just straight, bro. And it wasn't that I wanted to be like that. It was just that was the environment, you know. Like, they took advantage of our people, you know. And and I would sit back, like people already knew that I would step up. But the thing now was like stepping up for other usos, you know. The other usos, you know, islands are very humble people. That was the sad thing, like people took advantage of it all the time in there. And there was no real kind of like protection over them because everyone had already sold their souls, you know. Like all the, a lot of the older boys, not all of them, but most of them, you know, like they sold out to wherever the money was or wherever the drugs were, wherever the power was. So. All the poor usos who come in for driving or something like that were just left to fend for themselves. And yeah, like, so, you know, the seven and a half years was just about that, it was just about war and protecting my people. But going back in for the nine months also, it was just like trying to keep that faith, you know? Um, I don't want to, I, I, I didn't want to be someone who just speaks about it. I wanted to be about it too. And that's why it was so hard to turn the cheek, you know? Especially in a place like that, like one person does something, and you let it slide, everyone else is going to look at that, you know, and be like, oh. That's weak. Yeah, that's yeah. weak, you know what I mean? And and I honestly was feeling that. Like, I felt like people were looking at me like that. They're like, this is not the friendly look or, you know, like, and people were testing it, you know what I mean? And I just had to try and keep that, my morals, you know, my faith in Christ and just die to, to myself, you know, like what God says, like, die to your wants and your needs, pick up your cross, you know, and and we've got to suffer, that's part of the suffering, you know, is to look like a, look like a weak person, you know, and um, that's part of the walk, you know. And that's why I say, bro, it's a soldier walk, this Christ walk, you know. It's, people think it, you, if you're scared, go to church, that's not the case, bro. Mm. I'm not, I'm not fifty of anyone, you know, I'm not fifty of, um, it's just, it's a fraudulent life, you know, and, and the realest thing I've met was the love of God, and so, yeah. Well, we're coming here to uh, a spot, apparently. Yeah. 
is the that not be a G up, bro. I'm gonna go home and run it. Down. Oh, sole de kapungi. Oh no way. Oh. <laughs> Yo, it's so <laughs> I think it might be open just in like an hour or so, maybe half an hour or something. 11.30. 11.30. Oh, there we go, see? The Lord! Oh, I forgot my card. Sully. Don't G me up, bro. Like, it's 10 know. out of 10. <laughs> Anything island though is 10 out of 10. It's not like this guy said they don't eat island food. So I, don't, I don't eat island food. Bro, my grandpa died 56. My uncle died 37. My other uncle died, you know. I'm next in line. I, I want to make it past. 56. I'll die for my people, but I just won't eat the food. <laughs> Aloha, and thank you so much for coming through today to our um, Big Big Aloha. We've had amazing support, especially from YP and his family. Um, I just want to first and foremost give a big thank you, because without our community, there's no business, there's no Big Aloha. So. Thank you so much. Um, we've been operating for going on four years um, on the food truck and in the restaurant going on three years. So it's been a huge blessing. We, we serve Hawaiian food, but we do a little bit of uh, kiwi. We do a little bit of Tongan uh, with our otai. So um, it's been a huge blessing to be able to share a little bit of that through the food. And the blessing is in meeting people from everywhere. So. And, um, he grew up here, uh, so this is his, you know, yeah, yeah. this is his home, yeah. and he's so proud of Mount Joy. Yeah. He's on our food truck, it's got 2770 yeah. on it, so we've got yeah. 2770 on everywhere. Yeah. Um, we live here, so yeah. there's, nothing, there's nothing dangerous about Mount Joy, like what everyone says, I don't yeah. think, yeah. Mm. We're just all trying to make a living, I guess. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. No, we appreciate you very much for the positive things you are doing. But so. we'll give you guys a few plates. We'll just give you a little bit of everything and you guys can just... Oh, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Father, to come together to glorify your name, Lord. We thank you, God, for the lives of the men here. We thank you, Father, for Sanga and this talent and gift that you've given him, Lord. And we pray, God, that he continues to glorify your name. Thank you for the brother, Peel. Um, thank you for what you're doing in the brother. I pray, Lord, that you give him the courage to stand up in this generation, Lord, and to be a soldier of Christ, God, for your glory. We pray for all the rest of the brethren here. I pray, Lord that you cover them and their families. We ask Lord that you bless this food as we receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Solid, you see the explosion? Look at that. Good stuff, bro. Shout out to the Aloha, man. All of that's blocked out when you go inside, like the postcodes, all of that stuff. And if it is like, um, it gets sorted really quick. Just depends on how deep it is. I had um, a couple dramas of folks from other areas, but we sorted it out and then left it at that. It's just sad to see what our community is going through when they go to fight. Yeah. It's PR against PR or, you know, up with you against PR. It's kind of sad, to be honest, to see other coloured people and our people fighting each other. Yeah, yeah. So very full, you know, because like, there is bino swords inside too. The shows that are before, you know, they got the, uh, those long terms and they try and advise the younger generation. There's some usos in there, like one of my first mates done over 10 years. If he had that opportunity to be free, the things he'd do with his life, but sometimes when I have like eight of days or something, man, I just think, oh, you know, what, well, bro, couldn't be worse. Yeah, yeah. Now I could be in jail right now, bloody watching TV or training in the yard. Um, out here, you know, spirits of war. Where we're going um, is going to show you a glimpse, not as um, rough as it used to be, but it still gives you a bit of a glimpse on how it was around here. Yeah. 
where we're heading to. It's called Leftbridge Park. We just catch up with the locals, you know, throw on a free barbecue and just catch up with our community. Nothing like go and say, oh, we help the poor and things like that. We don't want to put that on our people, you know, it's like, we're just having a feed and catching up with our community. You, you know, you look at people and you think, oh, they want money or something like that, but it's, some of them just want conversation, you know? Yeah, no. they, want a, they want a handshake or they want a hug. It's not about going around and trying to be Mr. Beast or anything like that. It's just, we love our community and no one else is going to take care of them. It has to be us, you know? Yeah, so. Hello. You can have your block out if you want. It's up to you. If you don't want to be shown, you can block it out. Isn't it? Oh. We're going to door knock. Yeah. So usually it's going to door knock. Walk yeah. we'll out. Every Saturday, Franny and his family put on this barbecue for the community here at Leftbridge Park, funded by Ellie from the 777 Movement. Whilst his family are cooking the barbecue, Franny will go for a walk on each block and knock on every single door, inviting everyone to come for a feed. I'm doing the barbecue oh, again. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so come down, bro, if you're, if you're keen, you're free. Take care, God bless you, brother. As you can see, there's a lot of doors, and even with us split into two groups, it still took us about 20 minutes. Yeah, you know, you start to, after you do it for a bit, you know which doors not to knock on. <laughs> McGuire, F off! Man. Oh, sorry! <laughs> Hello! What? Hey, brother, we're just doing a free sausage sizzle. Good morning, that you do this straight out. Oh, no, bro, it's all God. It's the love of God. If it was my own strength, I wouldn't be able to do this. Mm. I'd be too busy chasing my own dreams, but, you know, I just. In love with the Lord, I can trust the Lord. I know He has the best interests for my life. So yeah, bro, we'll go to the other side. Yeah, I never, I don't like posting it. You know, the Bible tells us like, don't let your right hand know, or don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. And um, just want to be genuine with my walk, you know, with the faith. And that's why even I was telling those, I didn't really want to do this, like bring it on the camera. But um, you know, it's it's for the glory of God. It's not for the glory. I'm not a good person, you know. Because I do this, this is nothing. Like this is nothing compared to what Jesus has done for my life. To go and knock doors and give free sausages to my brothers and sisters out here who come from the same struggle, it's nothing compared to what Jesus has done for me, bro. You know, so um, yeah, it's, this is nothing. I'm not a good person, bro. It's all Christ. It's all the love of Christ, man. While we do this stuff. You never mentioned your dad. Yeah, I only met him when I got out of prison. Yeah. Yeah. So I met my dad when I got out of prison the first time when I was like 19. And um, I didn't, it wasn't something I wanted to, pus like, to pursue, you know, I didn't want to know my dad. Although I, I felt like I was a man already. And so I didn't want to, I was like, I don't need a man, I'm my own man, you know. But um, it was just, just you know, the, the love of Christ. Just reading the Bible, bro, and, and letting that mold you. Yeah. It starts to shape you, you know what I mean? It starts to tell you, this is what the world says, this is what a real man is. But in God's eyes, this is what a real man is. A man of honour, a man who can put his pride down and forgive just like I have forgiven you, you know what I mean? And that's why I look at my dad and I was just like, I don't know what he was going through, you know what I mean? And um, for him to to go or whatever, I, I don't know, you know? So I don't hold that against him. And yeah, it just started getting awesome since then. And it's just been a blessing, yeah. The blessing of forgiveness, bro. That's what really what changed my life. Very blessed with my family. Mum and dad and, you know, dad working hard, you know, two jobs when I was younger, trying to cover the rent and stuff like that. I've always been blessed. I grew up in a two-parent household, so, yeah, it's been a blessing. A lot of the, I wouldn't say a lot, but I know some families that are single-parent families and you can see the challenges they go through financially yeah. and spiritually as well. You realise you're blessed, eh? Yeah, we're sure. so very blessed. The church is all right. Would you actually? If I good good afternoon. Hey, <laughs> are you? Yeah, he's our panther player. Stephen Quan. Stephen Quan. Good afternoon, sister. Hi, brother. If we showed you the more that we all use. Man. It's oh, shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was, 
they need to clean up a lot. Especially with the different cultures coming in. Yeah. They got the Arabs as well now. Was that big back then? There, there wasn't, no, nah, there was hardly any Arabs. It was just Malalas, Aussies, Arlingis, PIs, and then slowly the Sangers come and Indians and Arabs. So now they got like heaps of Arabs setting up businesses at the mall and stuff like that. It's really so, good. So, what is this, uh, Westfield here? Yeah, that was where the trouble was yeah. back then, as the youth, as we all went through when we were younger. Hey, brother. Good. Oh, we're just doing the barbecue yeah, again, yeah, if you want to come. Yeah. Alright, see ya. Yeah, we don't blame them, you know what I mean? Times are tough, bro, and they're sick of people coming around and bringing cameras, you know what I mean? Like, they're sick of people coming and pretending to love them, pretending to care. That's why I try and um, show up weekly and hopefully give them Christ. Christ is the only one who doesn't give up. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have laughed at this, but I just bought my uncle. I don't know why, what? but the story about the kikala. The, the, On the head? <laughs> I was just thinking, imagine sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> kikala comes out here. Bro. <laughs> and you know the, the noise it makes when the like, a smash guitar is like... <laughs> he goes on the head. It's just funny, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You think because my name's Francis now you can... <laughs> you think you can just pass me? Nah, nah, nah. What do you want to know about it? No, nah, bro. Like, Except for the obvious. <laughs> about you, talked about it. you talked about it. Yeah. And, um, you guys were wrestling for like 40 minutes. Yeah. You know what's funny? I want to show you something. Okay, so the date is Thursday. So he sent this on Thursday. And you remember um, in the story how I told you I just had too much pride. I wouldn't press the thing. Even though I knew I was dying, like I couldn't press the... Were you, were you dying? Yeah, so when I got hit, this split, like, and the blood was just pouring, like... Yeah, so imagine 40 minutes of bleeding heavily. It was squirting like a sprinkler. Oh, I don't yeah. know, it was bad, bad. Yeah, so it was like a sprinkler at first. And I just remember it just going... Like, you know, like, squirting like that. Especially then you're trying to fight for your life, trying to wrestle and all that. Bro, it just comes out even more. And so, yeah, I just started feeling my body shutting down, you know, after 40 minutes. At the end of it, I was like on top of him and I was just trying to settle him down, but he was full. I believe was possessed and it was just off our taking drugs. I believe that opens portals, bro. Yeah, because the things he was saying and just the strength was just overboards. To this day, I was like, man, someone saved my life because someone buzzed up. And to us, like buzzing up is, you don't do that. It's like calling the police for help, you know? And um, so anyways, I was willing to die that night. And I, I was just wondering, like, I was always wondering who saved my life. Um, I know people probably thought, like, he's thrown off, he pressed it, but I didn't, you know? Yeah, yeah. But um, this is crazy, bro. So this was on Thursday, and it says, um, my love, Franny, good to see you doing the work of God. I was actually living above you and thing the night, so that was the person that done it, the night that all happened, and I was the one that buzzed up. I don't like to admit it, but I couldn't even wake him up. Yeah, but Nick, something told me to just buzz. And I said, Chief, you need to come check downstairs. He said, why? I said, trust me, that's all I'm saying. And he said, okay, and you get the drift, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah, it's crazy you bring it up and he, uh, after all these years, yeah. I just got the person, like the answer, who it was. Saved my life, bro, so. Because well, well. that's how we deal with our problems out here, you know what I mean? Like, we laugh about it, eh? Like, traumatizing things <laughs> it's the only way to deal with it bro is, is laugh about it and move on I'm not gonna sit about sit there and cry about it and and let that make excuses why I can't do something yeah, yeah. you know what I mean which is what I believe is happening a lot in today's generation everyone's having a sook about things that happened 10 years ago yeah, yeah. he was just like he kept saying Satan like Satan 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 like he kept screaming like that bro anything he could do was biting me he was doing everything he bit me over here um, and he latched on and he wouldn't let go. So I put my, yeah, I had my thumb in his eye and then he was just laughing. I was getting a mean hiding. <laughs> he's my friend, he's my mate now. Like, we're all good. I like, forgave him and that. And he told me the reason why he was crying is because like he was crying before he attacked because um, the voice was telling him Satan is in me. He's like, you have to kill him otherwise he's going to hurt your family. That's why he was crying. He was like, nah, I'm not doing it, you know? Because I was in the faith too, you know? But like I said, the, the walk with Christ is, is one of, it's a journey. You know, I wasn't perfect. It's not like I found Christ and then I, I became perfect. Like I'm still, the Lord is still refining me and taking out things in my life that doesn't need to be there. I looked at God and I'm like, man, I don't even deserve your love, man. You protect me, love me, love my family, give me peace. And I still choose to go to this lifestyle. You know, like, just because of pride, because I want people to know that you can't talk on my name, you know? Anyways, oh, we're playing basketball. Let's go. Bill invited us to a local park where his family was playing basketball. As we got to know him more, 
it was really becoming clear that he's really a changed man. It wasn't enough. As we saw him spend time with his family, you could see the peace and calmness he has with himself. You know, usually they also would be trying to look cool or that pressure, you know, to uphold some reputation, but he's free. Was too awesome. Man, um, everything just fell into place today. 100%. This is just natural. This is what we do. This is not like, hey, the cameras are here, everyone yeah. come. Like, yeah. We didn't expect them to give us all that food. Mm -hmm. We would come every Saturday at the same time and we'll be doing this. I've been walking through these those streets since I was young. A lot of the generation now, they don't even know what walking is. I just got my first car last week. Stop it. 33 years no old. And it was from an old man from church. Yeah. You know, he's been watching me catch a train and bus to church for eight months. It's strange, he gave me the car on Saturday. Yeah. He died on Sunday, last week. Oh, yeah. The car that you saw me driving, I've only had it for a week. The old man from church, he blessed me with it on Saturday. Sunday he passed away. So yeah, he was blessing, bro. So we're just finished basketball with the family. Gonna come get some dessert and then shoot off. I'm Shani, Shani Peter, I'm owner of Tealish Brownies. I started from home in 2015 and we opened our first store in 2018. It's a lot being a pony and having a business as popular as yours. I'm so grateful. Hey, I even try and like put a bit of our Polynesian influence like with our fitting and our mm. like patterns on the floor and stuff because I kind of, I want people to know that yeah. we're islanders, yeah. that, that run this. Yeah. Way to get to an islander's man's heart, bro. Dessert. As we were enjoying these Karaka brownies, the boys were telling us about life after prison and how even though they've moved on from that life, they're still facing the consequences from it. Obviously, it's, it's tough, but thankfully, it's, it's not happening you know, as often as it was. Actually, it hasn't happened in a, in a while since the last time I got out, but for that year, it happened quite a lot. Like, obviously, in the moment, you know, I get upset because, you know, I was supposed to, as a man, you try and protect your family and stuff, and some of the stuff I was doing was inviting them to come. So now, understanding that, it's just about changing my life. So doesn't involve the little lils anymore where they don't have to question is this guy still part of that life you know, they don't have to come and kick my door down and stuff like that the Netflix do justice yeah it, it was definitely a glimpse of how it was growing up for us in Mount Druitt I think they didn't see it, it didn't capture the effects it had on some of the young people mentally and a lot of uh, you know PR people we don't really talk about our problems but you know some some of those situations if you're 12 13 and you get into a situation with a little lil that uh, can leave you scarred or traumatised, you're not going to speak about it. You're not going to go and tell your mum and dad, oh man, these little lils, it just, you carry that around. And it didn't capture a lot of the reason why a lot of the youth was so upset at the little lils. The mental side, the, the, bad, the invisible battle that a lot of the youth are fighting in their head. But thankfully, you know, now it's, it's not as bad as it was. The area's a lot better now. All these great businesses coming out, showing out the community that our people are intelligent as well, and we're talented, and we've got a, a lot to offer. Thanks for the free feeds we get every day, brother. Well, are you free next week? <laughs> <laughs> now that was bad. It showed a whole different side of, of Mount Chul, you know, yeah. the community, yeah. and it makes sense now. People are gonna watch this and look. Oh, okay, that's why these guys call Mountie home. Yeah, that was the whole reason of why we wanted to do it. Uh, man, thank you, brother. Thank you for wanting to see our home. Uh, yeah, uh, thank uh, you guys for coming down, showing some love, boys. Like you said, man. Oh God, bro. Like, I'm telling you now. Today was not planned at all, bro. Yeah. Everywhere we went, yeah. we were getting looked after. Not many people can come to Mountie and experience it like we've experienced mm. it, bro. <laughs> Honestly, man. So, thankful for those things. Thankful for Auntie over there. <laughs> oh, yeah, love and blessings, man. Amen, brother. Let's go, bro.